like there's a responsibility as an artist because music is so culturally proud you powerful do you feel it's a responsibility as an artist to make sure you 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 tap into like social issues or make yourself a good representation for people coming up after you definitely yeah definitely, definitely. okay i feel like um music or just you know even uh it doesn't have to be music just the 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 power of word is so strong mm -hmm, yeah. and that can go so many ways yeah and if you just have an influence on just 10 people, 100 people, mm -hmm. you know, you leading them in a direction, you know, either for something positive or something negative. Yeah. And it's all up to you. Yeah. So for me, you know, for the people that listen to me or jam me or, or you know, came with me on my journey, mm -hmm. I definitely want them to enjoy themselves. I definitely want them to, you know, uh, be able to uh, solve their problems or their pain. Yeah. Or whatever the case may be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Even when people think they're not listening, bro, they listening. For sure, man. Hell yeah. Now, you're talking about this journey. You've been doing music for a long You said since 2002, since you was in high school, doing a battle or whatever. When I go back and I look at your catalog and your discography, and I look at over a short, such a short period of time before you started, between the Road to Apollo and the time you started dropping music, it's probably what? Maybe 2011 you started dropping your first tapes? Really? I want to say my first big tape I dropped in 20. 13. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everything from like two, I, I dropped my first mixtape in 20, 2006. Okay. But that's just like, yeah, just pressing oh, up a hundred of them, yeah. giving them out, da 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 da, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to get things popping. Yeah. And then from like 2006 to like 2011 and 12, I was moving back and forth to Houston. I would put out a couple of tapes on like datpip.com. Okay. You know, and just, it really wasn't, um, how can I say, business savvy, mm, right, right, right. you know what I'm saying, so I really didn't know what I was doing, you know what I'm saying, I was just in a position of, I want to rap on a mic and just put it up online and yeah. that's it. For sure, yeah, a lot of people start like that. Do you think that like with the growth of social media and the way that MP3 and streaming has changed, do you think that helps you as an artist and do you think it's kind of helped you, you know, progress from that state where you're just doing it not business, business savvy? Or do you think you prefer it to be the way it used to be? Um, I like, I mean, I like both ways, but I mean, to me, back then, being so young, I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, how to get my money or, right. you know, how to put something on iTunes or yeah. how to register a song on ASCAP. Yeah. You know, I, I just wanted to rap. Right. So I was rapping over like mixtape beats, putting them online. Mm -hmm. And just leaving it there, and and you know sharing sharing the link with people, not knowing like yeah that you can get paid, how to even get paid or what right. I was doing. So it wasn't until like 2013 that I finally figured out through trial and error, yeah. you know what to do, how to get it online, how to get your money from it, how to get some distribution. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, merchandising, retailing, all that stuff. Okay. So everything started falling into place, and then it started picking up. Yeah. So from there we started a company, and then things just started kicking off. The company is uh, La Magina. It's called La Magina. Okay, I said. It's right. a La Magina <laughs> Empire. It's a machine, uh, yeah. but in Spanish, it's La Magina uh, uh, La Magina Empire. dot com. They uh, YouTube. dot com backslash GTO yeah. TV. For sure, man. Yeah, so Hell we're yeah. trying to stay on it. Hell yeah! Now, when it comes to me, I'm from Houston, and growing up in Houston, like when it came to like Hispanic rappers, it seemed like. SPM was the only one like you know he had you know he had lucky Luciano's and his stuff because he was holding it down and unfortunately he went to jail I remember I asked you earlier do you have real responsibility for like social issues you know letting people look at you but as a Hispanic how big is it important the responsibility for you to represent for your people it's one of the biggest responsibilities I noticed that, I noticed that. for me um I just want to represent it in the right way, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, everybody got their own style and how they want to come out the game and, and do things their own way, and that's cool. Um, but, you know, when I go home at night or, you know, when my pops call me or something or when my mom's call me, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? They raise me a certain way to where it's like I already know better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's certain things that I might do, certain things that I might not do, based yeah. off of the fact that I know at the end of the day when I lay my head down, yeah. do I feel comfortable? Yeah, yeah. And you know, not only that, just how I grew up, man. I just 
I'm, we just more player. We just keep yeah. shit more cool. It's mm. like I'm not trying to do all that extra shit. You know right what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to just be me. You know, put out some good music. Let the people relate to it. Mm -hmm. um, let them bang that shit. You know what I'm saying? And let's keep it moving. For sure, man. That's the Houston <laughs> way. That's that's good though, man. Culture yeah. is important. Would you now? Would you say? You know, SPM to me, he's still the man. He's probably in my top five Houston rappers all the time. Would you say? What would you say to someone who said? You carry the torch, or you're the you're the main one as far as Hispanic rappers in Texas. Do you believe that, or is that a goal? Man, I, well, I, you know, I've had had people say that before, so I really yeah. appreciate them saying that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's enough lanes and enough, you know, torches to go around for everybody to get money yeah. and do their thing. For like sure. I don't think it's just a pyramid of like third, second, or first place. Right, I right. think you know, if you really just think about it, it's so much sponsorship so much um endorsement deals mm -hmm. um so many cities towns tours mm -hmm. and places you can go to promote and network your music that yeah. everybody can have their own lane you yeah. don't have to just be stuck in a mind frame of oh, only one person can hold the torch right, right, at the right. time you know what i'm saying now if you're going to look towards nationwide and billboard and all that then cool but if we're talking about just like getting people hot you know selling cds putting on your own shows and being independent, definitely anybody can do it. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? And everybody can get money independently and, and make that shit the dopest shit ever. Straight up, man. So you are independent. Definitely. And you're trying to remain that way? For the time being, yeah, man. I like where I'm at. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm with Empire. They gave me a dope label deal. Yeah. I put out mixtapes. They basically like albums how everybody do it. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? I get to drop when I want. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, I don't have to answer to nobody. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I go on tour when I want. So I, I just feel good. Like, we're in a good place. The only thing I want to do is just make sure I get the people the good music. Real talk. And you definitely do that.